Hello, I'm Laura Marshall. And I'm Melinda Rose, and this is Light Matters for August 8th, 2012. On this week's show, a new approach boosts negative refraction in metamaterials, a space institute develops a cancer-fighting laser, converting laser beams into controlled streams of single photons could lead to new quantum devices, and a nanoantenna made of DNA captures and emits light. A new technique can give metamaterials an extraordinarily strong negative refractive index as large as minus 700, or more than 100 times larger than the most previously reported, and could lead to new ways to manipulate electromagnetic waves on a much smaller scale than ever before. Over the past 20 years, scientists have created artificial materials with negative refractive indices. These negative index metamaterials define normal experience by bending light in the wrong direction. Now scientists at the Harvard School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, in collaboration with the Weizmann Institute of Science in Israel, have demonstrated a drastically new way of achieving negative refraction in metamaterials by applying kinetic inductance, which is the manifestation of the acceleration of electrons subjected to electric fields according to Newton's second law of motion. By confining electrons perfectly in two dimensions, the researchers can make the kinetic inductance much larger than magnetic inductance, and this causes the very strong negative refraction. The new technology could enable operation of terahertz and photonic circuits far below their usual diffraction limit. It could also lead to extremely powerful microscopes and optical tweezers. The findings appeared in Nature. A new technique harnesses the power of femtosecond lasers to seek, accurately map, and non-invasively destroy cancerous tumors, which could be a big benefit to brain cancer patients. The cancer-fighting laser was developed by scientists at the Center for Laser Applications at the University of Tennessee Space Institute, who used a femtosecond laser that focuses on a specific region to find and destroy tumors. After the cancerous area is precisely targeted, the intensity of the laser radiation can be turned up to burn off the tumor. This method has the potential to be more exact than current techniques and could even be carried out as an outpatient procedure. The new technology can be especially useful for treating brain cancer patients because it can non-invasively permeate thin layers of bone, such as the skull, and help define a targeted treatment strategy for persistent cancer. The method also overcomes the restrictions posed by current radiation treatments that damage portions of healthy brain tissue. It could also replace surgical options that are unable to remove all cancerous tissue. The team is currently working with the University of Tennessee Research Foundation to bring the technology to market. In a significant step toward the development of quantum systems, scientists at MIT and Harvard have identified a method that converts laser beams into streams of single photons in a controlled way. It is difficult to control photons because the interaction between two is very weak at best. Encouraging such interactions requires atoms that interact strongly with photons, as well as with other atoms that in turn can affect other photons. For example, a single photon traveling through a cloud of such atoms might pass through easily, but also might change the state of the atom so that the second photon is blocked when it tries to pass through. In the MIT Harvard system, no matter how many photons are sent into the cloud, only one at a time emerges from it. The cloud acts as a kind of turnstile for photons, forcing the jumbled photons into an orderly succession of individuals. The technique is based on the concept of electromagnetically induced transparency. The system could form the basis of a single photon switch. It could also be used to develop quantum logic gates, which in principle could be immune from eavesdropping when used for communication. The work appeared in Nature. A bio-inspired light nanoantenna created using two gold nanoparticles, short DNA strands, and a tiny fluorescent molecule can capture and emit light. The discovery paves the way toward the development of highly efficient LEDs and ultra-compact solar cells and could even find use in quantum cryptography. Light is a wave, so it should be possible to develop optical antennas that can amplify light signals in the same way that televisions and mobile phones capture radio waves. However, because light oscillates a million times faster than radio waves, nanoscale objects are needed to capture the very fast light waves. Therefore, the optical counterpart of a basic antenna of dipole type is a quantum emitter that is surrounded by two nanoparticles. Scientists at CNRS and A. Marseille Université created the simple, user-friendly optical antenna by embedding a fluorescent organic colorant and 36 nanometer diameter gold particles particles into short artificial DNA strands. The fluorescent molecules behave like a quantum source, providing photons to the antenna, while the interaction between the light and the emitter is amplified by the gold nanoparticles. They produced in parallel several billion replicas of these particle pairs in solution by a control of the fluorescent molecule positions with nanometric accuracy because of the DNA backbone. The study appeared in Nature Communications. 
Well, that's it for this edition of Light Matters, the industry's premier weekly newscast. We'd like to hear from you. Tell us what you like or don't like about our program. We welcome your comments and suggestions at lightmatters at photonics.com. You'll find links to share and subscribe to Light Matters by clicking the Share with Friends button on our video player. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.